I have a message I really look forward to share, and, and it's about our focus and freedom. And our focus needs to be right if we want to experience freedom. And I experience a freedom in jail, and that is related to the focus I got when I was in jail. And I want to speak about that with you today here, and I'm very excited about it. First, last week, I, when we went live with Torben, I talked about the words here in Matthew 10, where Jesus has commanded us to be wise as snakes and innocent as stuff. And I came with an example there of how when I got detained, they took my iPhone, my phone, and my code and have access to everything in my life. And I thought about that when I was in prison, like... Is there anything in my life that I cannot handle to see the light? And it was a message to all of you out there, and I've got a lot of feedback, a lot of response. And I want to thank you for that response, that feedback. And uh, my friend Sean in Texas, he did a small video, just a one minute video uh, out of this message. And I want to start with playing that here. I want to give a warning in this first teaching to you. Be wise as servants. Think of what you post, think of what you do, be alert. Don't be fearful, be alert. But also be innocent as stuff. Can you not handle other people? Take your phone, your computer, and go into your browser history, look at your emails, look at your bank accounts. Then repent. Start to clean up your life. Start to live in the light today. Live in a way that you know that everything you do will be what somebody is looking over you. Somebody want to try to use it against you to smear your name and to destroy you. Maybe it will not happen, but maybe it will happen. So live a life already now, so you are prepared for what is coming. And I, I love this video, and, and it's, it's very powerful, and it's something that should speak to all of us. It's something I hope that will speak to you. Can you handle that people take your phone, browse to look at your browser? Can you handle people look at your bank account? Can you handle people follow you 24-7, is there anything in your life that is hidden, anything in your life that cannot see the light? Then repent and change. Change. Live in the light. And another feedback I got, I want to play here with all of you. It was, and I want to just take a few minutes on this in the beginning before I move on to my message, because this is important. My friend Ron, who is in, t in Florida right now, he sent me a voice recording Tuesday as a feedback to my message last week. And um, it was very interesting what he, was say what he said. It was, I, I felt it was very powerful. It was a good feedback. So I asked Ron if I was allowed to share the feedback with all of you. And he said I was allowed to do that. So this is just a two, two and a half minute uh, feedback Ron sent to me over Signal. And I want to play that with you. And then I want to just talk a little about this before I move on. Listen to what Ron is saying here to all of us. Hey Torben, this message is a comment on your message on Sunday. And it's just another example of being innocent in doves. So uh, this is just something I happened to a friend of mine. Um, and that's all that's going to be in this message. So uh, if you want to skip it, that's fine. It's just an example that goes along with your message on Sunday. Um, I had a friend of mine who was uh, got caught in uh, child pornography, and he was guilty. He he was doing something he wasn't supposed to, and his computer got um, uh, taken by uh, the authorities, and they went through his computer and they um, pulled out all the files 
that of all the bad things he was doing and and he was he was doing some pretty bad stuff. I went to court and sat in the gallery with him behind his side um, just to support him because he is a friend of mine um, and um, he screwed up and he needs Jesus. But here's the whole point of why I'm telling you this. What's done in secret will be proclaimed from the rooftops. So me, a lot of his other friends, and his family were all sitting in that courtroom. And in the courtroom, they read out loud the files that they found on his computer. And they were descriptions of the really bad stuff that he was looking at. And it was very descriptive of what these things were. And they're just reading this, and I am just like, I don't want to hear these things, period. And I definitely don't want to hear these things involving a friend of mine. But what he did in secret was proclaimed openly in that courtroom and all his friends and all his family got to hear all this vile filth that he was looking at. So just when you were talking about being innocent in doves um, and you quoted that scripture, it will be proclaimed. It just made me think of that story and I thought I'd pass it on to you as a, as a testimony. I love you, brother. I miss you a lot. Can't wait to see you. Bye. I really felt this is powerful. Um, his friend, he got seven years of prison. His computer was taken. His wife left him. And he got an ankle brace he's going to wear the rest of his life. He's sorry and he's repenting, as I understand. This is the court he met, but there's another court one day coming. There's a day where it is Christ himself. <laughs> it's God we are going to stand in front of. And we need to have that focus and we need to live for that day. If you have that focus, if you live for that day, how holy will you not live? If you have that focus, that is up to man one day to die and then be judged, how holy will you not live? How much will you not live in repentance? And I want to say there is forgiveness when we repent. That is the good message. It's, it's not too late for you who see this to clean up your life. It's not too late to clean up your life and come in and experience the freedom. And Jesus did not come us just to cover our sins. He came to set us free from our sins. He came to create a new man. And there we truly need to repent and get a new heart and bury that old body that is a slave to sin in the water and then rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit and keep renewing our mind and living in the fear of the Lord and continue walking on the narrow road, being transformed by putting off the old man and dressing us with the new man to become more like our Father who is in heaven. Be holy as I am holy. And, and that is a message. And to have the right focus help you to live a holy life. And I want to read a verse there that lead us into my message today. Colossians 3, Jesus, or Paul starts with this. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Sit you, your heart of things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind of things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, 
who is your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. And then it comes, put to death therefore whatever belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and so on. Put to death therefore. Why do we put to death? Because we know that one day Christ will appear and we will appear with him in glory. We will one day meet our Lord. And therefore, we should put to death. So the return of Christ where he will judge the living on, on the, or, and the death, that, that is what encourages us to therefore put to death the whole life. So, to have the right focus help you to live a holy life. To have the right focus also help you when it comes to suffering, when it comes to persecution, when it comes to surviving prison, as I experienced the last year. 412 days I was in prison, and I want to say it was truly, truly hard, the hardest thing I've ever experienced. But I also want to say that while I was there, I experienced a freedom. I experienced a beautiful freedom. I had a time where I was praising God for being in prison. I was praising God for what he allowed me to experience. And that freedom came when I got my eyes away from the earthly things and put my mind to the heavenly. When I got the right focus and looked forward to what will one day come. And this is what I want to speak about, and this is very important. This is important when it comes to holiness, when it comes to suffering, when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to, to, to giving up everything to follow Christ. It's important when it comes to all of it. Hebrew chapter 10, when I was in prison, there was a word that really hit me hard. <laughs> and I want to share this. Hebrew chapter 10, it starts in verse uh, 32, and I'll come back to that many times during the, the life of Torben here, preparing the church. Uh, the author here, he said this, 10.32, Remember the early days when you have received the light, and when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you are publicly exposed and exalted, uh, to exalt and persecution. Other times you stood side by side by those who were so treated. You suffered along with those who was in prison. And, and then he come here, and joyfully accepted that they confiscated your property. So Paul, no, the author here to Hebrews, Paul Barnabas, who it may be, he said, remember the early days when you received the light, when you endured suffering, when you were exalted, insulted, when you were persecuted, when you stood side by side by those who are present, when you suffered, and then he continued, and joyfully <laughs> accepted that they took your possessions. Who will joyfully accept that? Will you joyfully accept that people come, break in, <laughs> and take your belongings? Will you joyfully accept being whipped? Will you joyfully accept being persecuted? Will you joyfully accept when people lie about you? 
Will you joyfully accept that you are being put to death because of Jesus Christ? And that is the thing we see in the Bible amongst the early disciples. And this is the thing we see amongst people all over the world who are being persecuted. That people are being whipped and they rejoice. People are being lied about and they rejoice. People suffer and they rejoice. People are rejoicing while they are being put to death. And the question here is, what? Why could they rejoice while people took their possessions? Why could they rejoice in the midst of pain? And he continues here. He said here, verse 35, uh, 34, and they joyfully accepted that people confiscated the possession, possessions. And then we read here, because you knew that you yourself had a better and lasting possessions. How could they joyfully accept that people took their possessions? They knew that they had something much better. They knew that they had a lasting possession. They knew. They really knew. Their mind was set on the things above and not on earthly things. Their mind was set on eternity and not just this present age. They will soon disappear anyway. They will all burn up. Anyway, their mind was set on the eternal. Their mind was set on the heavenly. Their mind was set on what the Bible wants us mind to be set on. Christ and the age to come. And because of that, they could rejoice. Listen here. You will rejoice in suffering because you know that you will be more like Christ. You will rejoice when people lie about you because you know that you are blessed. You will rejoice even if you will be put to death. Why? Because you know that you will be raised up with Christ. But you only rejoice if you truly know it. It is not enough to just have an idea. That is not where the freedom comes. And I want to say, when I came into jail, I am not new to walking with Christ. I have been walking with Christ for 27 years. I have been preaching, teaching the Word of God for 25 years. I've written books, I've done a lot of teaching, I know many things. And I have suffered, and I have gone through many things. When I left the NY persecution, I have experienced a lot of pain. I thought I, I knew it, and I knew it, but not, not in the way God wanted it to be. But there in prison, I tasted it. I tasted that freedom. I tasted that moment where, hallelujah, nothing can hurt me anymore. Because if we are truly, if we are truly set our mind above and on the things above, when we truly know, when we are truly receive this, then we are blessed, then we can rejoice. Why? Because we have an everlasting blessing waiting us. 
But if we don't know, if we don't understand, then it is terrible. It is truly, truly hard. I was in prison 412 days. COVID have ended. There was a lot of freedom all over the world. Freedom many have not had for a long time. And I have not had in the same way of traveling and having people from, for example, my family and other coming from outside America and just flying in to meet us. And now it all opened up. But I was locked down. <laughs> I could not be at my daughter's 18 years birthday. I miss Christmas, New Year. I miss my other daughter Stephanie's, two of her birthdays, two of my birthday anniversary. People was having fun, people was traveling, people was all over the world, and I was locked up. It could seem unfair. It was unfair. I have done nothing wrong. I was the innocent part. There was people spreading lies. They are the guilty. I could get hurt. I could get bitter. I could say, God, why did you allow this to happen? And I asked that in the beginning. But the more I saw it in the light of eternity, <laughs> the more I saw that I was being blessed in this moment, more than many of you out there who had fun and, and walked in freedom. And there were so many things I could rejoice about. If it was only this life alone, I have wasted a, a year. If it was only this life alone, somebody had taken a year away from me, they would never come back. If it was only this life alone, I lost my daughter's 18 years birthday and I will never get that back. And every other thing I lost, if it was only this life alone, there was nothing to rejoice over. And this is exactly what Paul is actually saying in 1 Corinthians 15. When he talked about the resurrection of Christ where there's people who say Christ did not rise up and, and he addressed that. And look at what he said here in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 30. He said here, he first said that Christ, he was risen from the dead, and he is. And then he said, and as for us, why do we, like if Christ is not risen, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day, Paul said. Yes, just as sure as are both of you in Christ Jesus our Lord, if I fought with wild beasts in Ephesus, with no more than a human hope, what did I gain? If the dead is not raised, then let's eat and drink, for tomorrow we will die. What he's actually saying here, Paul, he said, I'm facing death every day. But if there is no eternity, if Christ is not raised and we will not be raised with him and meet him one day, if it's just this life and this life alone, <laughs> Why do all of those things? Why faith face, face death every day if it's only this life? Why put myself in danger if it's only this life? If it's only this life, let's eat and drink and have fun. And why? Because tomorrow we are going to die. If it's only this life, I gain nothing by facing death for Christ. I gain nothing by being put in jail for Christ. I gain nothing by being lied about. I gain nothing if it was only this life alone. Then let's just eat and drink because tomorrow we will die 
and it will all be over. But it is not only this life. There is an eternity. And Hebrews chapter 11 is all about that. And if I had more time, I would go so much more into the whole chapter. And I want to look more of the whole chapter of Hebrews chapter 11 later because it's all connected. It starts actually chapter 10 and then 11 and move on. It's, it's without chapters. It's, it's one book. And there you really see that, that the focus is the heavenly Jerusalem. The focus is not this earth where we are for a short time as strangers and alien. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly, where we await his appearing. And, and that, that should be our focus. And I want to read one verse here because of time. I cannot go so much into the rest right now. But Hebrews chapter 11, we read about Abraham and Moses and Sarah and all of them. But I want to headline, headline what Moses is saying here and about Moses. Hebrews chapter 11, we read here verse 24. By faith, I want to say all of this is by faith. By faith, when Moses grew up, refused, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused. Everything this world could offer <laughs> as being known as Pharaoh's daughter, he get power, money, girls, everything there is in this world. He refused this world. And next words, and chose to be mistreated <laughs> along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pressure, pleasure of sin. He chose to be mistreated. <laughs> he refused everything this world had to offer and he chose, like Paul, why do I put myself in danger every day? Moses, he chose to be mistreated. Who chose to be mistreated? <laughs> Who choose to suffer? Those people who had the right focus. We read on here. He choose to be mistreated along with God's people, rather to rejoice the fleeting pressure, pleasure of sin. He know that this world is suddenly gone. It's a short time. And then he regarded this grace for Christ's sake as a greater value than the whole treasure of Egypt. Why? How? Because he was looking ahead to his reward. He discarded Everything this world has to offer. And he chose to be mistreated because he had put his mind of the things above. Because he was looking at his reward. And this is whole Hebrew chapter 2. It's Hebrew chapter 11. It starts with faith is a confident of things that hope for and assurance about things we do not see. Roman 8 is saying this. For in this hope you are safe. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hope for things that already has? That I have. But if we hope for things we do not yet have, we wait for it with patiently. We hope for things we do not have. We hope for things that is not seen yet. We put our faith in that hope. What is that hope we are living for? 
the redemption of our bodies, the heavenly Jerusalem, a new heaven and a new earth, to see God, our Father, face to face. He would be our God and we would be his sons and his daughters. That God is going to come down here on earth and make his dreading place amongst us. That we will hear, well done, you good and faithful one. To be home where you belong. This is what we hope for. We don't see it yet. Because who hope for things they already have? But we hope for something we do not have yet. And we put our faith in that. And because our faith, and we read in ch next chapter about Moses that by faith he left Egypt. It is by faith we are called to walk. And it's by faith we experience this freedom to believe in God's word, to believe in his promise, to believe in what is going to come. And when I was in prison, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the suffering, in, in the midst of the longing to be with my family and my wife and, and, and to be free again, I saw this. <laughs> I, I, I saw it with my spiritual eyes and the faith grew in me and I came to a point where I knew this is the truth. I knew that I was being blessed right now. I knew that I had a greater longing in heaven. But I left Denmark with persecution that time, came to America with eight suitcases. Now I left America, came here to Europe with four suitcases. It's going down the hill. We, we, our things is in America, like we are without a home right now. But we are blessed. Why? Because one day it will all disappear anyway. And we have a greater and everlasting belonging waiting for us. And we have a reward in heaven. And we are living for that day. And I want to pray for all of us here in the end. And I pray that you somehow will really receive this word and, and put your mind of the things above where Christ is seated. Live for that day when our Lord Jesus appears. Live for the eternal and not just this age. We are living in this present age where everything will disappear. Let's live for the age to come. Because that is where we find the freedom. That is where we live a holy life as we are called to do. That is where we endure in suffering. That is where we rejoice when people are speaking bad about us and joyfully let people take our possessions. Because we know that we have something that is eternal and we are actually being blessed through all of this we are experiencing. Let's pray. God, I thank you for everyone who's listened to this message. And I pray that we all will know, <laughs> not just know in our mind, but know in our heart, that we will receive it by faith. And this faith will grow in us that one day, Jesus, our Lord, you will appear and we will become like you. That we will now be sanctified so one day we will be glorified. That we will rejoice in suffering, in persecution, because our mind is set on the things above, on the things that is everlasting. God, come with your Holy Spirit, God. And help us to get our mind away from the earthly things over to the eternal things. Come with your Holy Spirit and speak to everyone right now, God. 
and help us to live with the right focus. And through this, God, experience that freedom you have for all of us. That we will not fear no matter what comes. But in the midst of all of this, we will be able to rejoice. Because you are good and everything you say in your word is the truth and we can believe in it. Come with your Holy Spirit and speak to all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen.